uh, Jody, yes. would you like to quiz me? Yes, I would. Did I write this book? Or did <laughs> somebody else write this book? Okay. Okay, look, this look, it's gonna be a little bit different here because I've written zero books. Yes. But Jody's gonna see if I can guess who wrote this book or what book it is. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. You ready? Are we ready? I'm, re I'm ready. I'm Her so ready. <laughs> Her heart ached with shy excitement, as if they'd never touched before. The kiss was a chaste brush of lips, barely there, yet powerful enough to dislodge an uncomfortable truth inside her. She wanted him here, and just the act of wanting in itself made her exhilarated and afraid, as if she were falling slowly enough to enjoy the sensation, but fast enough that landing would hurt. Gorgeous. Beautiful. I feel... Okay, like I have two guesses and I'm going to guess the first one and I feel like maybe it's just going to sound like every guess is this person and I apologize. Is it Talia Hibbert? Yes, it is. Okay, and I'm going to guess based on the fact there's some context clues available to me Yeah, that it's from Take a Hint, Danny Brown. Take a Hint, Danny Brown. Okay, now what is, is that the first kiss? Actually, I don't remember. Oh, why don't, <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. I covered Take a Hint and Danny Brown in an episode about uh, yeah. Black Witches and Romance. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. Danny Brown is like a witch. She's like witchy. She's woo woo. She actually uh, manifests uh, a lover. Yeah. Is that what she does at the very beginning? It's like she's manifesting yes. a lover. Yeah, that's the prologue is her and uh, a friend manifesting a lover. And it comes in the form of beautiful Zaff, ex rugby player, romance um, reader romance reader friend just like the greatest friend also i'll say this and i've said this on record i'm not a huge fan of friends to lovers but i think talia hibbert could make me love someone falling in love with the brown paper bag do you know what i mean so yeah cool yeah i just i love her pink hair she's so hot yeah <laughs> no, this is what's cool about doing this in a bookstore is like we had books that we wanted to talk about. We just like went to the shelves and we and, were like, just like pull it off. Yeah. Like this is fun. Okay. All right. I got one. Okay. Next. <clears throat> okay. I'm sorry. Give me one second. Okay. We both had COVID tests this week. We don't. Oh, yeah, we did. <laughs> that sounded intimate. Oh, wait. I'm, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I'm, excuse me. This is a G rated podcast. Okay. There will be no talk of intimacy. No talk. Okay, I started the quote at the wrong place. Are your injuries still troubling you? He asked. No, I'm just tired and glad I finally get to spend some quiet time with you. That sounded intimate and quite desirable, more than the choosing ordinarily permitted. He suspected they had bonds forming already, and that was both wonderful and terrible. He had never let himself feel too much before, not with the prospect of failure looming over him. This was what an outbound feels like, caring for her despite our differences. I'm so touched by this. This is obviously Strange Love by Anne Aguirre. Yes. Oh, is I that think you I, say I it? think I finally said her name right. I was saying Aguiar, but I was I I was like, I don't think that's right. I heard somebody else say Aguirre, and I think that's correct. Okay, Aguirre. That's what yeah. we said a lot. Yeah, Anne Aguirre. Strange love. I hate to sound like a broken record. I also have an episode about <laughs> yeah, this <she> one. Does. <laughs> <laughs> um, with the lovely ladies from Quomance podcast. Yeah. This book is so surprising because it, I don't know if any of you guys like have you read Strange Love? It's about an insectoid alien yeah. who accidentally abducts an Earth woman from St. Louis. <laughs> is I, that I, how you say it? St. Louis? Not St. Louis? Were you really saying St. Louis? I don't know. Yeah, uh, it's St. Louis. Okay. She I love you so much. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um uh, accidentally abducts her and her dog. You may ask how accidentally. I mean, just read the book. Yeah, you got to read just it. Just read it. It's it it is the most tender romance and so beautiful. When when I tell you like the sex scenes are beautiful because yes. They deconstruct, Anna Gire deconstructs what feels good. Like so much of sex scenes, in my opinion, yeah, <laughs> rely kind of like on these like markers of like 
this is how we think sex goes based sure. on sex scripts that we yeah. read about or see or whatever. And it becomes kind of like rote. And it's amazing when you read a romance or a book or see a movie or whatever, where they really just take apart your expectations and put them back together. And yes. you're like, I never thought of that before, but you're absolutely right. Yeah. That would feel good. And if I sat down and thought about what felt good without my preconceived notions about what I think I'm supposed to feel good, mm -hmm. what, what is supposed to feel good, that would feel good. And if I really had to sit down and think about it, maybe I would do different things or yeah. do different things for my partner. I was like very drawn in by, I think as a writer, I was like in awe of the way she, I'm just going to like have to completely come at like sex and intimacy from <laughs> from like a level that I've never seen. I've read alien romances and they're oh, all yeah. like I've uh, read alien romances they're, they tend to have similar anatomy to humans because yeah. obviously that's like easiest but like but like amped up to the point where you're like if I were to craft the perfect anatomy for right for one's pleasure yes how would I yes do this? And, and then book, make it blue. And this, yes, exactly. And yeah. this book does not take anything at easy. All. At all. No, no. Uh, you really have to like, because there were definitely some moments during the sex scenes where I was like, um, certainly not disgusted, but I was. You're like the chitin, like his. his. Yes. I'm seeing the word spines. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You just have to his completely reimagine yeah. what is possible that someone would like view as like sexy and intimate and pleasurable like you said i don't know i think it if you had to read it it will shit, blow your fucking mind blow like, your mind. that's it yeah you, your mind will be blown to pieces blown. it'll be out of this world yes <laughs> and xylar is so cute he's so cute and the talking dog okay like oh my god <laughs> and also like yeah. the talking dog is a real he's like fucking hilarious the, oh, yes. <laughs> yes. like i genuinely laughed out loud yeah yeah <laughs> oh it's so good but he's uh, always <laughs> like uh, can i have treats now well and yeah and <laughs> I, I just i think that again like in sort of like deconstructing like the things we say like how we interact with each other yeah. when you have a talking dog it really like exposes <laughs> all the weirdness uh, so look at look at us both trying to read i can't remember the dog i thought we were gonna get the dog's name oh so well, this is an interesting comment of okay, it feeling yeah. very heteronormative. I guess because it's kind of like in the blurb, right? The choosing oh, and because, like... because it was all kind of like based on a mate. But they didn't sexually reproduce. Like there was no genetic material that needed right, to be used. Right. To... I can totally see where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. But I never was like, oh yeah, this is a straight alien. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I guess I... I don't know. I... I think I sort of viewed it as like a completely different thing from what humans do and what how they behave yeah like within he... couplings and yeah. like intimacy and all that stuff obviously it's like a thing of like one partner stays with the nest and the um what are, nestlings is what I'll say because I, yeah. I don't remember the specific word nest guardian nest guardian yes nest yeah. guardian and snaps was the dog yeah oh snaps but also i don't know that it didn't i don't know it just didn't we should set up a debate about this. yeah i don't know i understand this po point but i'm also like eh, i don't know we would need we would need more detail we would need yeah. to really get nuanced. i think i'm gonna need to like go through and like highlight passages and like study it but yeah, yeah. but yeah, anyway i i encourage you to do that i know you do i'm a nerd Oh, I see we have another question. Jody, get another thing ready for me. Oh, yes, got you. Do you have plans to write an alien romance in the future? Space Ooh. or paranormal, perhaps, from Essie? Essie. This is a tough question. I am a hard sell on sci-fi. What about fantasy? How do you Unless it's fantasy? really kitschy. I what about have a, fantasy world a where Game of Thrones tattoo, so. Wear dungarees. <laughs> yes, only. <laughs> Their and dungarees are attached to them. Drip. Uh, <laughs> I I am a firm believer in never say never, but I think there would have to be a pretty big change in me. Now, paranormal, on the other hand, I'm a much easier sell. 
I think I would be like completely remiss to go my entire writing career without never writing a paranormal when Twilight was how I came yeah. into the game. Like, so werewolves or aliens? If you had to choose, and you do, I'm going to say vampires. <laughs> that wasn't an option. You made Julie laugh. <laughs> That wasn't an option. Okay, werewolves. Werewolves or vampires? Vampires. Vampires or enemies? Vampire enemies. That's like the easiest to do. Vampires, you've been alive 500 years. Vampire enemies or demons? Fuck. Demons. Okay. Demons or firefighters? Demons. Okay, I, I see we're stuck on demons. <laughs> all right, all right. Demons. Would you ever write a demon romance? I've well, read demon romance. Okay, also, like for those of you, like if you know, you know, the arc on Supernatural with Sam and Meg, where soulless Sam was like totally having a thing with Meg. And I was like, interesting, because Meg is like this demon. I was like, that's very interesting. So I think I could write. Okay, I think. With horns. Yes, but also. I think so much about like demon is such like a Christian. What I mean, what is a demon? Is the concept of a demon specifically Christian or just your idea is Christian because of that being your influence? I think my idea is Christian yeah. because that's my influence. Speaking of creatures with horns, probably my favorite romance with a character who has horns is His Beauty by Jack Harbin. Oh, I haven't read that one yet. Oh my god, it's so good. It's Beauty and a Beast, but Belle isn't helpless. Her name isn't Belle. And the Beast stays a beast. Is the Beast a devil? No, he's a beast. Oh, just like a beast? Fantastic. It's, you it's, know, Jack Harbin is really like doing what needs to be done. Yes. Like completely. Yes. So. I mean, just if you haven't read His Beauty by Jack Harbin, please do. Oh, speaking of beauty and the beast things i really enjoyed bitter burn by anna gire who also wrote strange love bitter burn is a beauty and the beast is it also he stays a beast is it alien no okay. no it's like a fantasy s see now i read them both like around the same time and now i'm like trying to like keep them apart in my head mm -hmm. i think also stays a beast but also another great like beauty. I got into like a little bit of like a fairy tale yeah. retelling thing. So are you are you ready to ask me another? Yes, I am. Are you ready? Okay. This is his superpower. I realize, capable of bringing you from zero to sixty with a single kiss, touch, or look. Of course, he ruins it the moment he opens his mouth. But the way he's kissing me now makes up for it. It's hard for me to picture not wanting him. When he leans back just enough so our lips are no longer touching, I am under his spell. It happens that quickly and completely. Harbor by Rebecca Wood. Yes, it is. Oh, fuck you, <laughs> by the way. Everyone right. You got everyone. I wrote that one. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to make you feel better. Uh, yes, I mean, yeah. You did a great job. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Uh, Harbor by Rebecca Weatherspoon is a poly queer polyamorous yes polyamorous queer kinky book i was searching for a word polyamorous triad oh yes yes because that's because it's it is a closed triad yes um, yeah a lot of it deals with grief mm -hmm. and healing yes and i feel like that book is just all about the communication Oh, 100%. The, the characters are, like, very honest with each other. Mm. They call each other out. To the point where I'm like, damn. It's, <laughs> it's like, I was reading it. I was like, do people do this? And I'm like, they probably In should. In a perfect world, I think we it, would all be talking to each other like it's that. It's great modeling. 100%. That's what I appreciated about this was, like, imagine a world where people actually talk to each other yeah. like this honestly. And then also the other person is like, okay, I can acknowledge that, like, this thing that you said, like, bit me a little bit. But also... Yeah, let me dig into that. Yeah. Also, I mean, because I have to go there, like, kink in such a, like, gorgeous, beautiful, incredibly mm -hmm. fucking hot mm -hmm. portrayal. But also, that's Rebecca Weatherspoon's entire, uh, what is the series Ooh. called? Oh, uh, Beards and Bondage. Beards and Bondage. 
the entire series is like really great. I think Harbor is the last one in the Beards and Bondage series, I believe. I think so. All three characters are black. It is two cis men, one cis woman. Mm -hmm. Just delicious. Yes, yes. Delicious. All right, are you ready for another from me? Oh, I didn't know you had more. I've got more. Oh my God. I've yes. Been, I've got a million more. Okay, yes. I only had three for you. You know I overprepared. Come That's on. fair. She'd made herself small and quiet, disguised herself as someone who wasn't quietly whittling her own seat at the table since she hadn't been offered one. I don't think I wrote this. You didn't. Okay. Who did? Is that a Katrina Jackson? No. It sounds like something Katrina would I was going to say, is it a... Is it's it... How to Catch a Queen by Alyssa Cole. <laughs> it's How to Catch a Queen by Alyssa Cole. <laughs> yes. So this is the Runaway Royals, which is an offshoot of the Reluctant Royals mm -hmm. series. This is the first in the series, and the second one, which is an Anastasia retelling, just came out. Do you remember what it's called? Something about a princess? I don't know. Is it the uh, sapphic one? Yes. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about, but I can't think of the title right now. Either. I can't either. Okay, but anyways, How to Catch a Queen. Uh, how, to a how to Find a Princess. Julie for the win. It's How to Catch a Queen, How to Find, find a, a Princess. princess. Ah. You know what? Um, whoever is naming these books knows how to do <laughs> I know, it. Exactly. They're um, kind of all connected. Well, yes. uh, well duh. Literally. <laughs> We no, are, we're punchy. Uh, <laughs> what day is it? I had a dark and stormy at dinner, so. <laughs> yeah. How to Catch a Queen. I really loved Shanti, yes. Yes. Like, her growth in this story of sort of, like, having drive and ambitions and, like, going for it and coming up with a plan and making it happen and also dealing with the gross inequities of the life that she lived and being like, yeah, this sucks, but instead of complaining about it, I'm going to, like, just push on through and, and get through. And I think that, that quote actually really, like, quietly whittling her own seat at the table since she hadn't been yeah. offered one. Whittling. Yeah. Whittling is such, like, a visceral word. It is. Yeah. It is. Like, <laughs> literally. <laughs> yeah. 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 But anyways, that spoke to me. Yes. Beautiful. Great book. So I told Dame Jordy, hey, Julie, do you have a Sharpie? Can I have? Oh, cool. Okay. All right. All right. Julie listen. is obviously the MVP. Julie and Meg, who own Copper Dog Books, like they are top notch. One of us. One oh. of us. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> Julie's like, do not get me on here. Okay. Here's, oh, look at this Sharpie. Okay. I have right here White Whiskey Bargain by Dame Jody Slaughter. Can you start getting Dame put in front of I your can name? Try. Here's what we're going to do. Please try. Yes, ma'am. While Jody signs this book, I'm going to tell you what's coming up from Jody Slaughter. She's going to write a really deep, moving inscription for me right here, and then I'm going to read it in front of all of you. And no pressure. It, this week is Jody's first official author events. So we had a boat cruise last night. That was Jody's first in person author event. And then this that you are all taking part in virtually is, I guess, her second. Disclaimers my handwriting is chicken scratch i just want everyone to see us holding hands here my handwriting is chicken scratch okay and that's it mostly. okay all right jody what is your first book from saint martin's press about <gasps> my first book saint martin's press releasing june 12 2022 is called bet on it it is a book that we have been sort of like the taglining like a bingo based sex pact it involves like mental illness and a small fictional southern town and peach cobbler and closure with like one's family and like found family and friendship and the importance of like allowing yourself to love and be loved. Should I do that? Yes. I'll read your book. I'll see if it's okay. I mean, I'll, do, I'll find out like if it's a thing you I think really you don't do. allow me to love you. It's really hard. I try. I, well. Okay, no, I let you love me. No. Tell the truth. I'm shame the devil. I'm trying to let That's you That's another me. southern phrase. Tell the truth, shame the devil. All right, you'll have to explain that to me later. I know. Okay, and the book that you are writing while you are in my abode. Yes. I cannot currently share the title largely because it's subject to change at any moment, but it similarly follows the gambling theme, only this time we follow like a lottery winner. 
it's got like a marriage in trouble meets second chance romance there's like a skating rink and it's also set in like a small fictional southern town Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of descriptions of beautiful nail art is everybody ready for the inscription no i'm Mm -hmm. not to andrea thank you for bolstering me supporting me and teaching me things i scratch 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 (laughs) didn't know i needed love you endlessly does that say jody slaughter well kind of a little bit you should put a dame in there (laughs) should i i'll write a dame all right here we go (laughs) I'm very demanding. Thank you all so much for coming to this live shelf love oh, event. What was that e? Yes, live thank from you. Copper Dog Books. It's Wednesday night. night. Thank you so much for being here. Thank I hope you. you all had fun. I guess I'm gonna like download this and like put it on the podcast at some point. Yeah. But of course, I'm gonna edit it because I am a perfectionist. So I'm gonna take out all the ums. If any of you thought that I didn't actually say um in real life because you've only listened to me on the podcast, that's what whoa, the editing whoa, is whoa, for. Whoa, oh. yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah, thank you so much for coming to see me. Thank you for supporting me. And Andrea, we love you. And I don't know, you know, like keep fucking rocking. Keep fucking rocking. Keep fucking rocking. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a fantastic night. Please support my local indie bookstore. I mean, Copper you, Dog Books. You can support yours if you have one and they're like into romance or just support But mine. support Copper Dog Books first. Also, also, yeah. I think Julie put in, you can pre-order Jody's books when they're available Yeah. on CopperDogBooks.com. And this is Jody's official bookstore now. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It 100% is. Yeah. Uh, this is yeah. my home. Just FYI. I actually buy, if I want a paperback copy of a book that I can't usually find in a bookstore, search on their website because I actually get a lot of books. There are books that people like self-publish on Amazon that you can get paperbacks through indie bookstores. Yeah. So it's it's because of distribution rules, depends on like if they can get it or not, but there's actually a lot you can get. And so you can get your paperback copy, support a local bookstore, support an indie author, yes. get a book on your shelf. Plus, of course, traditionally published stuff, which is cool too, I guess. Yeah, a little bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whatever, you know. Okay. All right. And that is it for tonight. I hope you have a great night or day, depending on what time it is. I don't know where you are. I guess you're all like- It's a- Wicked Light. Wicked Light. Oh my God. She's trying Boston accents. Did that, was so- that it? No. No. Huh. We'll practice. You hate to see it. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye.